Hi folks, uh, this video is called Peon, and this is not me clowning on my audience. Uh, I love you guys out there. Uh, I want uh, the best for you, so I'm just out here trying to uh, make sure that, uh, that, you know, being a peon is not the way you live your lives. Now, I've come to recognize that there's a lot of people out there that have uh, an incomplete uh, understanding of what insanity is. Um, they work off of a definition or a quote uh, often, uh, and I think it was attributed to Ben Franklin. Not quite sure. Uh, there's a lot of people that are taking credit for it, so I'm, I'm not gonna. You can you can snope it if you like. Uh, but that definition is this: uh, doing the same thing over and over again, and expecting different results. That's not really a definition of insanity. That's just one of the symptoms or one of the behaviors whereby you could say, "Hey, wait a minute! You know that guy? He's he, he's not all right. Um, he's got some problems." Uh, my definition of insanity is the inability to perceive the truth. Now that's a little bit more subtle. Now everybody gets in that argument. Okay, what is truth? Okay, well you you figure that out for yourself. I've got been plenty of videos on that. Uh, this is going to be just a little bit simpler uh, because I'd like to show you one of the more dangerous things we do over and over again uh, that causes us a lot of problems and it's becoming a fatal problem right now. Uh, there's real danger here. So I'd like to illustrate this uh, with a little, uh, um, you know, little story, a little graphic uh, to show you exactly what I mean by this. In the current graphic, I represent uh, a crime in, uh, being committed. Okay, the criminal is the guy with a stick, the red guy. Uh, the victim is the one face down on the ground. Uh, and generally when a crime is being committed, and it really doesn't matter what crime, uh, you know, it could be assault, could be a robbery, could be a fraud, uh, could be any number of them. Uh, anything that uh, we typically don't want done to us and that uh, as a group, uh, uh, you know, disagree, uh, you know, with that, you know, deprivation of rights. Now, usually when that happens, um, there is somebody that raises or attempts to raise attention to the crime and, and to get assistance. Now, if you realize, okay, a lot of the times, uh, you know, we don't want to go against a violent vict, uh, violent criminal. Um, you know, um, the guy raising the alarm, the green guy with the hands up, he, he's, um, you know, he's one guy, and 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 simply by trying to, uh, uh, yeah, you know, convince people that hey, you know, I, I need you to help with me. Now that help probably doesn't mean that the crowd itself has to go against directly go against a criminal. Um, they may just have to just stand there and say, hey, stop that. Okay, but it's certainly the one guy raising the alarm and the victim himself do not have the the power to control the situation or stop the situation. So, and, and when you look at it per, uh, at a perspective, uh, I mean, you've got all these people standing around. Uh, I mean, the criminal is not going to have any trouble realizing that he's outnumbered. And if it does come to a fight, he's done. Now, if you notice, there's one of the yellow guys standing off. The blue guy, the guy standing off to the side, is somebody that the group, tends to perceive as being an uh, authoritative or somebody who can actually uh, you know, accurately uh, portray the situation and, and in, in essence they leave it up to him to judge what is actually taking place. Typically what's occurring now uh, in, in the modern world is this authority right this this blue guy that we give authority to you know render you know accurate you know pronouncements and or accurate assessment of what's going on is completely misrepresenting these situations in in this case he totally changes the roles of the participants in the incident uh, around where the victims themselves they're portrayed as the perpetrators or the bad guys, and the good uh, uh, and the uh, the true bad guys. They're labeled as good guys, 
And because we trust that blue guy to tell us straight and honestly, now we come against the, uh, the actual victims of the crime. Now that's a problem, folks. If we can't make those decisions for our own, then uh, we actually are, are become party to it. And, and that's the, the, the true problem. Now, in our modern world, this is going on a lot. In reality, what's actually taking place is the perpetrator of the crime and the one we take as an authority are actually in on it. The authority is actually covering up for the criminal's actions. And we, because we trust the authority, we actually turn against the victims. Now, it's important to recognize the psychology here, okay? And, and you have to understand that the group of people here, you know, they feel a little uncomfortable uh, confronting a criminal who's, you know, beating somebody up or, or robbing them, okay? They don't want to put themselves in, in any kind of danger because, you know, we've become cowards. So it's all too convenient to, you know, you know label the victims as perpetrators way convenient why because hey look those guys they don't have a club they're easy targets it's easy to stand against the victims we don't I mean, that's that's gutless why you know we're what gonna confront somebody who has you know no weapons no teeth yeah that's real easy that's real easy that's a lot easier than actually you know, just, you know, confronting the criminal. This is where cowardice comes in. Very, very dangerous. Now, something very insidious happens the second we turn against the victims. We actually become party to the crime. Now, and if you're one guy surrounded by these criminals, it can be pretty terrifying. I mean, you're in a group of people where you're outnumbered. You know, forget about just uh, confronting the criminal. I mean, you're just trying to, you know, stay alive here or, you know, trying to, you know, keep what's yours or, or whatever. I mean, it becomes really scary. And, and we become compartmentalized in society. Uh, and, and we all feel like we're surrounded by these bad guys when really that's not what's going on here at all. Uh, so when we start participating in this uh, in this ruse, uh, we become party to the criminal action, and you know that hurts us. And the reason it hurts us is because there's a real possibility that we might be the next guy you know lying face down that the criminal chooses out of the population to go after and then one by one each one of us can be picked off and managed uh, separately this is happening this is happening right now now the group of people are actually countries and one by one these countries are falling to this ruse and they're all being uh, you know, used against one another. All the all the participation uh, participants in the society, society are are being marshaled against them. You know, using uh, you know very simple conditioning. You know, of course we want to uh, we want to rely on somebody to speak for us, right? You know, somebody who's honest. But what happens when that person that we take as being honest isn't? Something very cruel happens. Not only that, but it becomes an incredible trap. It's, it's a trap that most people don't want to be in. Now, is that the most dangerous thing uh, occurring right now? No. They've learned some new tricks. Now what they do is they create virtual victims and virtual criminals. And they marshal public opinion you know, against a, a particular uh, segment of the society and turn the majority against them. 
Now, when that starts happening, uh, it won't be long before one by one they go after everybody. And because of this conditioning, they're free to do it. Who's going to stop them? They're telling us the truth. Hey, you know, oh my gosh, you know, that guy's a bad guy. That isn't until, you know, you realize, hey, I'm the bad guy. And that's what this is all about. Now, I'm not going to tell you, um, you know, that, uh, you know, th there's, you know, a, a way of doing this by going out and protesting and stuff like that. Uh, but what you need to do is just simply realize how you're being conditioned and just stop doing that. It's very simple. Now, the blue guy that we take as an authority, who, who, who is that? Well, that's the media. You know, these are the people that uh, are, are largely out there, uh, you know, reporting. Uh, you, you know, uh, they don't often refer to themselves as reporters anymore. Uh, they call themselves journalists. And they might as well be novelists. Uh, they might, might as well be, uh, you know, fictional, uh, uh, you know, uh, writers. That write, you know, non uh, or fiction. Um, there's not a lot of nonfiction in in modern media. Now, who's the criminal? Well, the criminal is largely the people that control all of the assets uh, all over the world. Uh, almost 90%, probably 90% of all of that which you see <laughs> belongs to a very few people. Um, it's not a not a large not not, not a large group. However, they've co-opted us to help them uh, through that process that that I just went into. Uh, you know, and, you know, w w what are these, you know, virtual, uh, you know, victims, virtual uh, uh, perpetrator, you know, scenarios? Uh, I I'm really not going to go into that. They're out there. Um, you know, if you do a little bit of poking around, uh, there are plenty of people out there uh, that do investigations on some of the more, let's say, uh, uh, you know, larger types of let's say terrorist act and you know who are those terrorists um, you know who are those victims uh, there's a lot of odd things happening with respect to some of these more mainstream terrorist events uh, most especially exactly uh, most especially when you look at exactly what happens after that now now recently there was a there was a big terrorist attack in England uh, in Manchester uh, that was really convenient. Now there's 5,000 troops on on there, on, on the streets. Well, that can't be good. Now what happens when a government uses some sort of, you know, false event uh, to deprive people of, of, you know, their freedoms? Now it's pretty darn convenient. And, and if you look back, a lot of these terrorist attacks ushered in right afterwards, some pretty draconian uh, choices, all in the name of security, right, to protect you. Um, I, I, I don't see how it really protects me if I can't leave my house because there are troops on the street, I can't go to the store and buy food, or uh, I, I, I don't see how I'm more secure by, uh, you know, huddled in, being huddled in, in my house, unable to move, uh, you know, uh, or, you know, uh, being afraid of being, uh, you know, interred. Or, or interrogated, you know, every time I tried to find, you know, get food or water to my house. Uh, I, I don't see how that improves my security. I, I don't see how uh, anybody else actually, uh, you know, calls that security. Uh, but, you know, look, hey, we are that one yellow guy, right? Uh, surrounded by these, these red guys around us, or at least that's how we perceive it. Now, a number of people have uh, uh, made some comments regarding the con video uh, and that's that C with the uh, zero and, and the slash through it uh, and said yeah how can this work now what's so important about this how powerful is that well quite frankly uh, the being who you are this this general consciousness that 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 self that everybody is trying to find that, that internal truth, that, that, that real being that you are, that's wearing these flesh suits, uh, th that being is well aware of what's going on here. Um, 
and it serves a purpose. Um, there are reasons why things are happening the way they are, uh, and there's also reasons why it needs to end. Okay, when that being decides it's going to end, then it's going to figure out very easy ways of actually uh, of ending it with the least amount of real pain as possible. Now, hey, look, let's let's face it. There's going to it's going to be uncomfortable. Uh, there's going to be people that are going to uh, suffer, and there are going to be people that die. There's also going to be people that resist. Now, people say, well, how does that work? Well, by taking, by removing your consent, by removing your consent, although you might be a red guy surrounding the yellow guy, you're not party to the crime because you don't consent to it. You're being forced. So therefore, you're not actually responsible. The only ones really responsible are the, are the victims that actually perpetrate it, those in the media and, 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 and those that who are, who've got the club beating the victims on the head. you got to realize that when you, re, when you recognize that the media is actually party to what's going on, because it's not real hard to figure out. There are very few people that, uh, that, that are in control of nearly all the information flow uh, across this world. I mean, that, it's a small number. However, in the scenario where they change the victim and the perpetrator, and, and we, you know, in our cowardice, we look for a guy that's not carrying the club, and we can go after him because, hey, you know, there's no downside to us. We really have another option here. Remember, the real perpetrator here is uh, the other guy who is not ha doesn't have the gun. That authority that we place above ourselves to tell us what's what's really going on. That guy doesn't have a gun either. That guy's got a pencil or a tape recorder, and he's standing in front of a cameraman. Well, none of these guys have guns either. They're easy targets. And I'm not saying go out there and put pressure on them. I'm simply just saying show up to their door. You know, if you're going to lodge a protest, why aren't you in front of NBC's uh, uh, GE, who owns a lot of these? Why aren't you protesting there? If you want, I mean, if you're led to protest, I don't recommend that because you know it's ineffectual. How do I know it's ineffectual? How how, how many protests have there been out there, and has anything really changed? Nothing's changed. Gives them an excuse to crack your skulls, beat you up, and hurt you. You know, if you're into that, you know, hey, you know, I'm not going to tell you not to do it. I'm not going to infringe on your rights. If you think that's the solution, you go on out there and you try it. You're going to get hosed off with pepper spray. I mean, you know, some countries, they spray sewage on you. I mean, you know, if you think having sewage sprayed on you is actually going to, you know, uh, you know, that that's them making fun of you. That's what that is. I, I, you know, I, I, I don't know. I don't think it's very useful. Uh, I don't know if you really think about it. You probably don't think it's very useful either. So what I say is, hey, just remove your consent. Don't be, don't be that guy. Okay. The other thing too is, is that symbol, right? The symbol with the eye and and the little uh, the uh, the null symbol in the. You know, why is that important? That's that symbol is actually pretty important because whether or not people see the video, whether or not people understand the video, whether or not they believe that it has any power whatsoever, the being that's inside them knows exactly that's a, uh, that that is a doorway out. That being knows how much power there's there. there and it knows when people actually decide that, hey, wait a minute, I'm removing my consent. I'm not, I'm not doing this anymore. That being knows it. That being is in charge of all the things that happen. That being controls gravity. Now, you might think that, hey, this is something that's in your head. I'm not talking about something in my head. I mean, we can all agree that gravity is a force, a real force, that affects the universe. These are the principles, these are the laws that I'm talking about that are in effect here. If you don't think gravity has an effect on you, you know, all you have to do is test is jump off a building. Now, I don't suggest that either. I don't think I have to because I think you already know what happens when you jump off a building. 
Uh, if it's high enough, <laughs> you don't matter. Uh, if it isn't high enough, oh, it's going to hurt enough to where you don't try that ever again. These are the principles I'm talking about. These are the principles at work. Now, there's other people that are saying, hey, well, you know, how do we know that these guys are on board? I mean, they could be saying that they removed their consent, but they might be the, might be the guys we're going after. How, how do we know that these guys aren't traitors to, to this cause? You know, again, it's the being. We don't have to know. The flesh suits that we wear, you know, doesn't have to think about it, doesn't even have to know about it. The being that's inside of us does know. Now I'll let you in on a little hint. If you're not continually engaging in criminal acts, you get a powerful tool back to you uh, that you can use again that you lost a long time ago when you were a little kid. And it's actually a conscience. We don't appreciate how, how powerful a conscience is. A conscience not only helps you navigate between what's right and wrong, but it's the best truth detector out there. And most of us don't even harness its power. Why? Because we're in a perpetual state of criminality and we commit these crimes against ourselves. Uh, people who do that don't require a conscience. Because they've, they only have one choice, they, and it's the wrong one. They don't have to decide whether their actions are right or wrong. They don't even have to use a conscience, so therefore it just sits, sits there unused. You got a rat in your midst, you have a working conscience, it don't take very long for him to expose himself. It's an incredibly powerful tool. And it comes with these types of things of removing your consent to, to criminal actions that you, you know, in ignorance perpetrate and, and, and that you're party to, or that you even commit against yourself. When you remove your consent, you get some tools back that are very important. One, you get a capacity, you can develop a capacity of seeing contracts where you're giving up your rights. That's pretty handy. You know, the best way to avoid, you know, an obligation that you can't meet is to not get into that obligation in the first place. You know, the other thing is, is you can do this completely in secret. Now, to illustrate this, this, you know, switching the perpetrator and the victim around, you know, right in front of us. And how people might say, oh, well, I'm not conditioned to do that. I, 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 I can see the truth. I can, you know, I, I, I can make that. And, you know, I don't trust the media anyway. So, you know, I'm not conditioned that way. Uh, well, whether or not you're conditioned or not, there's a lot of people who are. And uh, let's look at a couple of people who are the guys with their hands in the air saying, hey, there's a crime here. There's a crime here. I'll tell you, how about two names or three names? Okay, one of them is uh, a man named Julian Assange. One of them is a man called Edward Snowden. Another one was a man named Seth Rich. When I say that name, okay, half of you people say, hey, he's a hero. Half of you people say, oh man, he's a traitor. See, there's a problem. Now you just divided us based purely on our perception. So now we're not actually going after the criminals. We're actually going against the guys who are waving their hands saying, hey, a, a crime is actually being committed. And see how subtle it is? Now who says these guys are traitors, huh? The ones caught with their hands in the cookie jar, right? Seth Rich, right? Seth Rich turns data over to the DNC, or to WikiLeaks, DNC data to WikiLeaks. WikiLeaks publishes it. You know, where's everybody at, right? Oh, they made an example of Seth, Seth Rich. They shot him, or killed him. I believe he was shot. He's dead. I don't want you to take that risk. That risk is totally unnecessary. I 
I respect his courage. But quite frankly, in our society, that's a man alone. That's that one guy with the green hand or the guy laying on there, you know, outnumbered by a population that doesn't know who's lying to them and doesn't know who's, who's telling them the truth. Why? Because they've mired themselves in criminal acts and disconnected themselves from the truth. I don't think that there's very much more insane than that. That's the inability to perceive the truth. What happens if you don't know the people around you are lying to you? What happens if you don't have a truth detector? And what is that truth detector? You know, those of you who are familiar with little kids, there's a saying, out of the mouths of babes. Well, what are the babes saying? <laughs> the babes have no trouble calling BS on stuff, and they'll say it right on out, and it will surprise the parents and the adults. Why? Because they have no limitation. They can see the truth. They still have their conscience. They get a free pass when they're kids. So they get to have their conscience when they become adults and they lose it. They don't know they've lost it. Right? You know, the young kids too, do you ever, you know, you can see this happening. The ones that are not too long in the confusion process, you know, you, you, you try to, you know, you do these little gullibility tests where you try to trick them, you know, and they look at you, you know, they get this funny look on their face and they go, nah, -uh. you know, how do they know? Well, they know because they have a conscience still. And you can too. It's it's easy to get back once you know. It's something that heals heals back. You get it back once you stop continually injuring yourself. You know, and only these people that withdraw their consent and say, "Hey, look, I've had enough." Now you got to realize th this is not that scary. If you take a U.S. dollar bill and you look on the back, there's this pyramid with the eye at the top. Then it says New World Order, and then o o Oculus something or other. Uh, I don't you know something about you know eyes okay all-seeing eye well who's the all-seeing eye the being that you are truly not the suit you're in. The being looking out of your eye that's the eye on the top everything else is in service to that eye on the top you're walking around here like a peon slave Your suit, your flesh suit, covers the most powerful being in the universe. And right now, your flesh suit is giving all that power away. You know, when I read, when I was 12 years old, I read the Constitution, the U.S. Constitution, and I said, wow. I live in a country where everybody out there is working real hard to protect my rights. What a great country. I, I read the document, I said, wow, I understand this. This is cool. But, boy, was I ever naive. But to just have that, that feeling one more time. Oh, only for a little while. It's a dream I have. What if everybody on the planet is doing all they can to protect the rights of everybody around them? Would we have these problems? Now that is a dream worth dreaming. Look at charity. You got folks that control most of the assets, yet you know, we go and they, they, they demand charity from us. Now, what are we going to do? You know, what, our 10% our of the total? What are we going to do? We're going to solve world hunger by what we make? You know, it, if the guys that owned everything didn't want any poverty, hunger, starvation, strife, or, or you know, poisoning of the biosphere, it'd be done like that. Don't even come to me and ask me for charity. I don't have anything. You don't have anything either, too, probably. You're certainly not going to affect it. Not when they got 90% of it. But they come to you and ask you for charity? <laughs> charity is a gullibility tax. 
If you participate in it, all you're doing is giving what is yours away, not to the people that need it, but the people who have stolen everything from you. I don't know about you, but I've had enough. I, I think it's time something else happens. Let's try something really simple. Let's just be ourselves for a change. Be yourself. Trust yourself. Know yourself. I'm Roge, and we'll talk again. Take care.